the Rode Wireless Pro versus the DJI microphone. Which is the better buy? The brand new Rode Wireless Pro just debuted for $399 US dollars, making it decently more expensive than the $329 DJI microphone. The Rode Wireless Pro is the upgraded version of the Rode Wireless Go 2, and it has a bunch of upgraded features that put it more on par with the DJI microphone, such as a longer transmission distance of 250 meters and the inclusion of magnetic clips. The Wireless Pro has seven features in particular that set it ahead of the DJI microphone. We'll talk about them in this video and also go over some reasons why the DJI mic still might be better for you. This whole video is being filmed at both the DJI microphone and the Rode Wireless Pro, and I'll be alternating the audio in this video so you can hear exactly what it sounds like straight out of the microphones. Now first off, if you're not familiar with them, both the DJI mic and the Rode Wireless Pro are dual channel wireless microphone systems. With built-in mics on the transmitters, or you can also connect wired lavalier microphones. So basically, you can record audio from afar. You don't have to be right in front of the camera for your audio to be picked up. I can even have my back turned to the camera, and my voice should still be pretty even in terms of how it sounds. These wireless mic systems work with cameras, computers, or phones, so they're ultra versatile, and basically everyone should have one if you're making content these days. Okay, let's get to those comparisons, starting with the number one reason why the Wireless Pro is better than the DJI mic, and that's the fact that the Wireless Pro now has 32-bit float for onboard recording. Now, both microphone systems allow for onboard recording, which is really good for backing up your audio, but the Rode Pro now has 32-bit float. So this gives you more range in your audio files to help you recover clipped audio or raise audio levels if they happen to be too low. So I'm going to bring these two microphone transmitters directly in front of my mouth. And so you might notice that the audio is peaking pretty badly for both, but with 32-bit float, I can actually go into my onboard recording for the Rode and I can make adjustments so that it doesn't sound as bad and my audio isn't clipping as much. Now this doesn't mean that you shouldn't care about where you place your microphone. It really shouldn't be directly in front of your mouth. But if you're in a scenario where the sound might be fluctuating a lot, or you're a two-person vlogging team and one person tends to speak more loudly than the other, then 32-bit float can really be helpful. Just know that it's for onboard recording only, so you will have to do some editing to fully take advantage of this feature. And this is where feature number two comes in handy, which are time codes. So this is a feature that the GoPro Hero 12 is also debuting, and it helps you synchronize your audio and video with ease in post-production. It's not a feature that everyone will use, but it's super helpful when used in conjunction with that onboard recording feature, or whenever you want to replace the audio track that you recorded on your camera with backup audio from the transmitters. The third key benefit to the Rode Wireless Pro that the DJI microphone is lacking is intelligent gain assist. Now this first came out with the Rode Wireless Me, and when it's enabled, it automatically adjusts your audio levels for you. Now on both the DJI mic and the Rode Wireless Pro, you can set your own gain levels, but there's always the risk of your subject being too loud, so you end up having clipped audio, or your subject being too soft, so you have audio that's too low. With gain assist, you don't have to worry about setting the wrong gain level or having to manually change it while you're filming. So this is not available for onboard recording. It's only available for the internal recording on your camera. But if I bring the microphones up to my mouth like this, then you might notice that the road is a little bit more even. And that's because of the gain assist as opposed to the DJI microphone, which does not have the gain assist technology. And thus the sound is not as even. And now for the fourth reason. So the Rode Wireless Pro now comes with the new Rode charging case, which is something that came out recently. You can actually buy it separately to go along with your Rode Wireless Go 2. But now if you buy the Rode Wireless Pro, it automatically includes the charging case, which is really cool because previously I would have to buy a third party charging case and those were just never really the best solution. So really nice to see that coming from Rode. Now, DJI also offers a charging case. You might notice that the Rode case is a little bit bigger than the DJI case is, but I can actually fully close the Rode case with the wind muffs attached to my transmitters, which is not the case with the DJI. Like, I cannot close it when I have those wind muffs fully attached. The Rode battery case is also made from a softer material. It's still protective, but it's nice because if you happen to drop it, 
which I may have already done, then it keeps things protected, including the case. So it's not likely to crack or break, whereas the DJI mic case is a little bit harder, and if you do drop it, you can actually chip it or break it. Also, the battery life on the Rode Wireless Pro is longer. You get seven hours of recording from the transmitters versus five hours on the DJI. And both cases will give you two additional full charges of all the units. The fifth feature is also related to the charging case, and that's the fact that if you connect the charging case of the Rode to a computer via USB, you can not only charge the case, but it also connects the transmitters and the receiver all at once. You no longer have to attach them separately like you do in the DJI. This is handy for taking off your backup audio and also changing the settings on all the units via Rode Central. Now that is a bit of a downside for the Rode. You still have to use the Rode Central app on either the computer or a phone to change the settings on the microphone system. You can't change the settings on the receiver like you can on the DJI. Next, the Rode Wireless Pro comes not only with a charging case, but also an additional case that's filled with accessories, including two wired lavalier microphones. These are not included with either the Rode Wireless Go 2 or the DJI microphone. Now, since DJI doesn't actually make wired labs, I usually recommend people buy Rode labs. And these Rode labs that are included are actually valued at $99 each. So a pretty good value. So I have that wire lav mic clipped more or less where the other transmitter is. And this is what it sounds like when it is plugged into the Rode Wireless Pro. And this is what it sounds like using the wire lavalier microphone plugged directly into the DJI transmitter. This is what it sounds like. The Rode Wireless Pro transmitters also now have a locking 3.5 millimeter TRS connection so the labs don't get pulled out by accident. And the final feature that sets the Rode Wireless Pro above the DJI microphone is the ability to record with a third microphone, the one that's on your headphones or your headset. When the 3.5 millimeter output on the receiver is not being used to plug into a camera, you can plug in a headset like the Rode headphones. These can be used not only to monitor the audio, but also to record your voice on the headset microphone. This way you can have audio from one or two transmitters, plus audio from your headset. For our final audio test, I switched over to my iPhone 14 Pro, and this is the baseline of what it sounds like if I'm filming with just the built-in mics on my phone. Now we have the Rode headset plugged into the receiver, which is plugged into my phone, and you're hearing the audio from the headset microphone. Now I am using a Rode headset, but you don't have to do that. You can actually use your own headset that has a microphone as well to get the same effect. But the nice thing about this setup is that I can record not only from the headset microphone, but also one of the transmitters and even a second transmitter. So this way I'm picking up audio from three different sources and getting them in that same video. Now in my testing, this is most applicable when filming on a smartphone or a computer. So you could use it to record interviews or podcasts, but it's a feature that is not available on the DJI microphone. So in summary, the Rode Wireless Pro has tons of upgrades, some of which put it on par with the DJI microphone, and quite a few actually surpass DJI. However, there are still some reasons why you might want to stick with the DJI microphone. The first is if you want to pay a lower price. The DJI microphone is $329 US dollars, while the Rode Wireless Pro is $399 US dollars. But do keep in mind that the Rode includes two high quality lav mics valued at $99 each, while the DJI mic doesn't come with any wired lav mics. Another pro for the DJI microphone is that you can change the settings faster thanks to the touchscreen display on the receiver. You don't have to connect the units to an app to change the settings like you do with the Rode. The DJI mic units and the charging case are also smaller than the Rode, so they can appear more discreet when you have the transmitter clipped to your shirt. And finally, the DJI charging case includes USB-C and lightning adapters for connecting to a phone or computer. Now they can be a little bit finicky to attach because they are so small, but overall they have a smaller footprint than having to carry cables and a whole separate case of accessories with you. So those are some pros and cons between the Rode Wireless Pro and the DJI microphone. What do you guys think? Which one is the better buy these days? And also, what do you think of the audio quality, which I've been switching between throughout this video? Let me know in the comments. Stay tuned because I will be doing a full review of the Rode Wireless Pro as I use it more and gather some thoughts and opinions about it. And I'll also do a full setup guide to it. And it will be pretty robust because there's a lot of settings and features on this mic system. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. 
Thanks for watching, and remember, when in doubt, just shoot it.